program is brought to you by UpgradeMyMemories.com. Convert your old home movies and picture albums to DVD. Visit UpgradeMyMemories.com to get started. It's easier than you think. VHS tapes typically only have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. Don't wait until it's too late. Visit UpgradeMyMemories.com and preserve your memories for generations to come. You'll be glad you did. Hello, this is Robert Copper, and this is the Robert Copper Show. And we are episode five of the Second World War, and we're here with Sergeant George F. Bent Jr., 13th Air Force, Southwest Pacific Theater, 42nd Bomber Group. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sergeant Bent was a tail gunner, and he's going to tell us about his experiences in the Second War as a tail gunner. And uh, this is George, and it's my pleasure to introduce you here today. And thank you so much for sitting down and talking to us uh, about your experiences during the Second World War. Where were you born? I was born in Linden, New Jersey. Linden, New Jersey? What year was that? 1925. Uh-huh. March 28th. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up in a big family? Three sisters. Oh, yeah. Three sisters, mom and pop. Yeah. Good, good. You, when they wanted me. They called you up and uh, you went. Did yeah. you enlist or did they did they enlist? Oh, good, yeah. That was Air perfect. Force. Airplanes. Yeah. And did you have any experience with airplanes before that? Oh, yes. Oh. Tell All us my life. Oh, well, tell us about that. I'd be, be curious to what, what your background Every is. Every chance that, well, that I got, I put a plane together. Balsam wood. Mm -hmm. you rubber throw band. Rubber band, yeah. yeah. But as far as a, uh, as a full-size airplane you can get into, your first experiences was? It was with a, a summer get-together of people that go to a fair. Mm -hmm. And I went up in an airplane. Biplane. Yeah, it was biplane. So you had an open cockpit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was always interested in airplanes, mm -hmm. so I got very interested when the war was on, because my father was a veteran of World War One, mm -hmm. and I wanted to fall into his footsteps, mm -hmm. which I did. Mm -hmm. And they were in the Air Force. He was a sergeant. Sergeant. Uh, How about your mom and your sisters? Were they uh, for it, or were they? Sure, they were all for it. They were all for it. There was it. a war on. Yeah. Where'd they send you to boot camp? Miami Beach, Florida. Oh. Right see. around the civilians. Yeah, yeah. Marching right down Main Street. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of planning that went on into Yeah, it. yeah. Because I went to, every single night I had a shower and I could shave it if at night mm -hmm. if I wanted to. It was just like a civilian going into the Air Force. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Because it was beautiful. It was well done. Mm hmm What was the name of the hotel? Clevelander. The Clevelander. Is it still there, do you think? I have an idea that it might be. Yeah. Because Miami Beach is a well-known place. Oh, yeah. It's a, a, a famous resort. How many uh, How many folks were down there with you? Thousands. Over. I enjoyed it because they welcomed us. Yeah. So where did you go after uh, after basic training? To a training with an airplane. Mm -hmm. That was at uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Well, where we were fit. We were based at the college, which was the uh, college in Arizona, and it was for, it was in Tempe. Mm -hmm. And we were we were also went to school there. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I was back in high school again, except mm -hmm. that it was for professors of college, mm -hmm. and we had a very good time learning the same things that we learned in high school. One day a week we weren't flying, mm -hmm. and then it was two days a week, then it was three days a week. Finally, five days a week we were flying, Just flying. learning how to fly a Piper Cub. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to fly a Piper Cub safely, effortlessly, and also uh, expertly. Mm -hmm. I didn't solo because I got disgusted at the at the uh, instructor. Mm -hmm. He swore all the time. And my mother and father brought me up not to swear. So I was disgusted. He swore 
every other word was a swear word, and I was cringing. Yeah. So he took that to, to believe that I was not pilot training good enough for him, because pilot had to deal with the world that was there. And I said, well, I deal with it also. And it didn't go over very well. I flew everything that he asked me to fly, but he was always in the back seat. So I graduated from school yeah. and went to pilot, pilot, co-pilot, navigator, mm -hmm. waist gunner, tail gunner, school. Yeah. Where we learned to behave in an airplane mm -hmm. like we were supposed to. Yeah. And that's what I did mm -hmm. at different bases. Yeah. You specialized in being a tail gunner. Yes. All through training. Waste gunner also. Yeah. Okay. So that you could do any one of the guns for defense. Mm -hmm. And that's what those guns were for. They were to defend the, the bomber uh, right. uh, while it was doing its job. Right. Yeah. Very important position. What was the complement of crew on that particular uh, aircraft? You had a pilot? Co-pilot. Co-pilot. Navigator. Mm-hmm. Bombardier, mm -hmm. engineer, yeah. gunner, top gunner, waist gunner, mm -hmm. tail gunner. Mm -hmm. We trained together, shipped overseas together, mm -hmm. and flew bombing missions together. Yeah. How many missions did you did you fly? Do you remember? Twenty two. Twenty two. Wow. And the war ended. Yeah. Fortunately. Are there any missions that stand out? There must be some, some missions that really stand out in your mind. There were harrowing missions. It's in combat. Yeah. The yeah. Japanese Zero was coming at us. Mm -hmm. And I gave a burst out of my tail guns. Mm -hmm. Two bursts. Mm -hmm. And he changed position. So I asked the pilot to bank to the left, which would put me in a more advantageous position to fire shots to kill, mm -hmm. which he did, mm -hmm. which I did, mm -hmm. and it, uh, the first burst, the tracers scared the pilot, who was Japanese, mm -hmm. in the Zero, scared him away, and he flew. We never saw him again. Really? So you, it worked. He turned tail and ran. Can you tell us a little what what a Japanese Zero was? What a, it was a single single, single engine, air, single airplane. Yeah, with one pilot. One pilot and and he one was, engine yeah. And he was the gunner as well. Did he have a gunner? He he did had to do everything oh, in yes, a small he, plane. Yeah. He had a gun that flew missions for knocking down airplanes. Mm -hmm. He was equipped with uh, a machine gun just like I was. Mm -hmm. Not as powerful. Yeah. Not as good because sometimes they malfunctioned mm -hmm. and the airplanes that we flew in, never had a malfunction in combat. Hmm. It was good. That was interesting. Put together very well. Yeah. Any other missions you can tell us about? Bombing missions. We were shipped to Palawan, the Philippine Islands. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the, my term in the Air Force. In Palawan we were, is it in the Philippine Islands? the lowermost island that is a group of the Philippines. And at this airport, we were instructed how to use a certain type bomb, which had a pedal, pedal P-E-D-D-L-E, on the nose. Mm -hmm. And if it would touch anything, it would explode. Oh. It's an anti-personnel bomb. Mm -hmm. And some Japanese were in a village in New Guinea, which we flew to and bombed, and flew back home again. Mm -hmm. They worked mm -hmm. beautifully. A B-25 normally carries 22 500-pounders, mm -hmm. so that's quite a load. Wow, yeah, it is. So where did you start out? New Guinea? Yes, New Guinea. And what was the name of that, uh, that base? Biak. Biak. Biak in New Guinea. Yes. Um, on the northern coast, mm -hmm. west northwest coast. So the crew all met in New Guinea, and and you had you had been training together. But we you assembled, 
and found your bomber. We and flew together. You flew together, yeah. In a, B, a C-47. Mm -hmm. Transport. Yes. Yeah. DC-3 sometimes, civilian called it. Oh, yeah. Yep. We were trained to take the position in another airplane similar to our own, mm -hmm. should the need arise. Yeah. Here we're looking at a nice uh, collage of pictures, and this young man must be you. That's right. And how old were you then? Eight years old. I caught diphtheria. Oh. Which kept me back from graduating with a class in the second grade, mm -hmm. which carried me back in age okay. the same until high school. That's you with your, your mother? Yes. Handsome young man. And these must be your folks here? That's correct. Yeah. This is in Connecticut. And that's in, Conne in Connecticut. Are these are your sisters? Yes. Three sisters and you're on the end there. Right. And my sister Sylvia. Oh, okay. She was two years younger. Mary Kay was the brain. She was the brain? Was yes. she the oldest? She the oldest. Uh-huh. And then there was... Jean. Uh, Jean? She was the funniest. <laughs> she provided laughs at the dinner table. Oh, that's good. And we had a dinner table every night of our lives, as long as the father was home. Mm -hmm. That was during the Depression. He was a personnel manager in Simmons Bed Company. Oh, really? Linden, New Jersey. We're a country of people that marry and have children yeah. every year. Happens, so they all need beds. You need beds for that, yeah. Well, by the time the war was over, my father was looking for another job mm -hmm. because he lost a job in Illinois, where he was personnel manager of the Elwood Ordnance Plant, mm -hmm. which produced 75 millimeter shells for the Air Army. Mm -hmm. He lost the job because the job closed out. The war was over. So the job that he took was with this girls' school in northern New Jersey, which was Montrose School for Girls. Mm -hmm. Mother was a house mother, and when the cook took a day off, mother filled in the position. Mm -hmm. And it was a private school which emphasized religion. Now what happened in the fire? You had mentioned there was a fire. What did that... Uh... We had all our household goods for 30 years, stored in a gymnasium mm -hmm. at the school mm -hmm. at the close of the year. Because at the close of the year, they decided that they couldn't afford my father's salary. So we took another job in Connecticut mm -hmm. and left all our furniture, all our household goods in the gymnasium, which later caught fire. Oh. And I rescued some of it, yeah. as you can see. So did you did you miss that you lost a lot of your your service year records? Yes. Yeah, that's too bad. A lot of them. Uh, and this is from the headquarters combat training station, Green Green is that Greenville, uh, Army Air Station, Greenville, South Carolina. Now you haven't mentioned uh, the Greenville, South Carolina station. What was going on at that uh, at that particular base? Learning how to fly in yeah. the airplane doing our particular job assigned. Okay, so it says uh, George, uh, our GF bent uh, rank sergeant, uh, has been checked out in all emergency procedures for B-25 type airplane, including bailout, fire and flight, ditching hydraulic emergency systems, single engine procedure, and crash landing. I'm glad you passed that. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> This is a piece of a newspaper. Daily News, VJ edition. Victory in Japan. Okay, VJ Day, yes. It comes out every week. Oh, I see. Why you're overseas. Oh, yeah. The following is a chronology of significant dates in the Pacific War. December 7, 1941. Um, 1941, Japan attacks Pearl Harbor. Uh, January 2nd. 1942 Manila Falls. Where do you where do you start to come into the action in these series of dates? 1943. 1943. So you would be around here, yes. about here. Uh, 1943 June 29th. Americans invade 
New, I can't make that, at New Georgia? That's correct. Okay. What month did you come in? Out of high school. Right out of high school. Tenth you, grade. So you, you, were, you enlisted before finishing the high school. Yes. And went through the war and then came back and finished high school. Uh, June 14th. Let's see. June, uh, June, of, uh, June 1st, uh, B-29 raid attack Bangkok is, uh, what's that say, target? Target, see right there. Okay. June 14th, Saipan invaded. Yes, but we're in New Guinea. June 15th, first B-29 raid on Jap homeland. Yatawa hit. The Sun Center Daily News, World at Peace. This was a weekly newsletter we, we got. Mm -hmm. Keep us informed. Yeah. The monstrous raw uh, battle has at last ceased to swallow up the lives of men. The waste of war measured in lives and the natural resources of our nation should lay in a heavy stomach-laden cloud upon our consciousness as peace sweeps over all the fields of battle with silence. Now as never before, should we realize how dear to our hearts is the American way of life, in that it has called for so great a sacrifice. The victory of the American arms and scientific genius has been the most monstrous victory in the history of the world. Time alone can tell the effects of the atomic bomb on the mental and psychological development of mankind. It is then very mere meet and proper that we should all at times and at all places in view of the changing world about us give thanks to that almighty power that has led us so far in bringing the prospects of a lasting peace to men. So far no one has discovered an atomic bomb to destroy all the evil of the world. But many men have discovered that through the power of God in the souls of men, changes have been wrought. Perhaps like moles, we shall eventually develop eyes to see light. With But until that time, VJ Day will be the only surveillance as long as we are thoroughly prepared to again duplicate this sacrifice of blood. That's very moving. Very. Now this was uh, the chaplain's message, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Carlton W. Harrod, Fighter Command Chaplain. Every 300 men had a chaplain. Mm -hmm. And they, they spoke to us, encouraged us, set a good example for us. Mm -hmm. After waiting for months for our numbers to come up, which was given, we were given numbers all the time to determine when we would go home to our loved ones. This air, a aircraft carrier was owned by the Navy, but that was converted to taking men with no longer carrying arms back home again. Mm -hmm. And it was the Bonhomme Richard, if you will check your memory, Von Humbershard was an air, a, a, a vessel which was used in the French and Indian War of the United States. John Paul Jones was the owner, was the captain, the captain. of the vessel. This aircraft carrier took the name hmm. and credence to it, hmm. and it was converted to carry men a troop carrier back home mm -hmm. we had a shower every night three meals a day and church on sunday we were going at top speed but the top speed of this aircraft carrier was 30 miles per hour it could really move mm -hmm. huh. so here we have a page of that vj letter a vj edition newspaper I'm just going to read a little bit. It's called the Jungle Fighter Command. Ending almost 1,000 days of combat, the 13th Air Force Fighter Command today hails VJ Day on a high note of triumph. 
The outfit was born in the jungle of the Hebrides on the 13th day of January 1943 at 1300 hours. Whims whimsical brass hats flouting superstitions hoped any re resulting jinx would fall from the Nipponese. They needn't have worried. The new pint-sized command packed a roundhouse wallop so unlucky for the South Pacific Japanese Air Forces that they went out of business on February of 1944. Guadalcanal, the first show for the fledglings, orders were to wrest air superiority, air superiority from the nips, the fighting cocks, sunsetters, and light, lightning lancers had already seen service with the marines at the canal. The men lived on Hedstrom Field where they duck snipers, bullets at a hundred yards range. Ground cools peeled one eye at the clouds because of the groaning of planes for a strike that eventually meant sweating out four or five raids. That's where I was stationed. Palawan. Oh, okay. It's clear to me now. It looks like a boot. Yeah. The reverse of Italy. It was large enough to land a B-25. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to be. <laughs> just, though. You just? We were skimming the water tops sometimes mm -hmm. with a bomb load that was extremely heavy. And we, we'd be feet above the water and taking off. We were right out of land. Yeah. It was small. It was an elbow sticking out, but it was flat. Yeah. So it was easy to make an airplane. Markfield, that's in the Philippines. In the Philippines, okay. By this time, uh, MacArthur had corrected the situation which was brought upon us when the Japanese invaded. Well, that you had this, this base um, up in the Philippines, or Palawan. Near the Philippines, Palawan. Right there. Uh, they were obviously allies. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. New Guinea was taken over by the Japs mm -hmm. early in the war for raw materials. Oh, yeah. Rubber. That's why I was moved from Biak, which is right there, mm -hmm. to Palawan. We, we just eliminated the Japs from New Guinea, mm -hmm. and we were moved to Palawan. So we bombed these areas. What point of the war did we uh, rid, the, rid New Guinea of, of the Japanese? What year was that? 44. Guadalcanal was the big, big uh, area there which we fought in. I remember one interesting thing when I first landed in New Guinea, and it was very, very interesting. I was washing the dust off of my guns in the tail when I sensed something was standing six feet away from me, and I slowly turned, and here was a native of New Guinea and he didn't have a stitch of clothes on. Not one stitch. <laughs> and I was aghast, because I had not seen a new native New Guinean ever before in my life. But he smiled, so I smiled back. And of all things, we shook hands. I was shaking hands with a, with a native of New Guinea, which was the first for me. Mm -hmm. And it was a very it's a good thing to remember. He put his hand out first. And you knew to take it and... He was it. six feet too tall. Wow. Oh, gee. <laughs> that's... So I was a little bit aghast, but when he held his hand out, that's an international... Yeah. ...sign of friendship. We were busy bombing runs. Yeah. And I never saw him again. He stood there for a while. When I had finished my job, I waved goodbye to him. Yeah. And he waved goodbye to me. When we fly, dirt is picked up from the ground, mm -hmm. and I'm in the tail, and I get it all. Yeah. So I kept the guns real clean. Windows in the airplane stayed pretty clean, because oh. they were on the top. Mm -hmm. But anything on the bottom got the dust. Where is the tail gun? Right at the tail of the plane, even past the... Uh... Two caliber 50s. Yep. See them right there? Oh, I see. Okay. The barrels. Yep, sticking right out the back. So you, 
And this was the, um, what did you call him? Waste. The waste gunner. One on each side. Okay. See the gun? It's yeah, I can see it sticking right out there. Right. Yeah, it's a wonder anybody got any hits on you. You're well armed. And this fellow was... A navigator. A navigator. <laughs> that makes sense. He's right up there at the top. He can yeah. look at the stars if he has to. When the plane is equipped, there's a good, there's a good turret up there mm -hmm. with caliber 50s in it. I was in a B-25J. Okay. And this is a B-25? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Mm -hmm. So it was halfway through the alphabet. Now I see some guns coming out the front here. Bombardier. Your bombardier. So the Bombardier had uh, uh, defensive guns as well as being responsible for the, uh, for the payload, the bombs. Yes. Oh, he was a busy man. Yes, he was. <laughs> right Cyclone. Right Cyclone. Is that a radial engine? Yes, it yeah. is. Uh -huh. Very powerful. 180 miles per hour. That plane did 280? Yes. Wow. That's fast. That's empty weight. Empty weight. It's a Bombay. A Bombay. So that's in the main fuselage. Yes. Okay. Skip bombing, is that where they would drop the bomb onto the surface and it would skip along the surface and hit the, the ship? Right, you're low enough. Yeah. Ten feet above the water. Ten feet. Wow. At 200 miles per hour. That's kind of scary. <laughs> but the pilot was excellent. Same age as I was. He had gone through gunnery school with me. It was 52 feet 11 inches long, 16 feet 4 inches off the deck. It was powered by two 1,700 horsepower. That's 1,700 horsepower Cyclone engines. It's a wonderful plane. Still is. Have you ever done a Chandelle? No. A Chandelle is, a, is where you exercise the stick of the airplane, which is a single engine, single engine forward to gain speed. Mm -hmm. And pull the nose back and the pedal on the right to a chandelle, which is a, a an increasingly steep turn up to almost vertical. And then it levels out before it stalls. And if you can imagine a B-25, which has two engines, and which is a war plan, mm -hmm. it's capable of doing. You wonder and you say, wow. I was always comfortable in it. Even That's in the tail position, yes. Well, I want to thank you for spending time with us and telling us about your experiences uh, as a tail gunner. You're quite welcome. We're, we're, I know we're going to have more to talk about, and that will come in, uh, in succeeding uh, editions. So, uh, again, thank you so much for being with us here today. So long. Mm -hmm.